In this video, we walk through the steps for solving an equation by completing the square. Now, the first thing you want to do with completing the square is you want to get all variable terms to one side of the equation and you need a constant on the other side. Now, you notice here in this example that that's already set up for you. Uh, the second step is to divide all terms by the coefficient of x squared. This second step will make sure that your x squared coefficient is a positive one and that will allow us to easily figure out what we need to add to complete the square. Now the coefficient of x squared in this case is a positive one. If I divide everything by a positive one, that's not going to change anything. It's not going to help us, so we don't need to worry about that. The third step says to complete the square, and that's when we divide by two and square it. And then that means we're talking about this middle coefficient here. Divide that by two and square it. So up on the side, you may be thinking about this. I have to take 6 divided by 2 and square it. So that's 3 squared, which equals 9. And that 9 is what I need to add to both sides of the equation. Now, here's why. I mean, I can add 9 over here, and that's fine. But it, as soon as I add 9 there, I've altered this. It's not balanced anymore. And what I do to one side of the equation I have to do to the other side of the equation, so I have to add 9 to both sides. Now, the reason I added 9 and I completed the square was so that I could factor the left side as a binomial square. That's what the last video was all about. It was all about taking things that are of this form and factoring, factoring it as a binomial square. And this will factor as x plus 3. Remember, I'm getting the 3 from this piece right there the number you get before you square. And this is going to equal, of course, a positive 23. Now, once we've gotten it into this stage and we've factored as a binomial square, it's pretty simple. You just apply the square root property that we were doing at the beginning of the section, and you finish solving get x by itself. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides Remember my plus or minus, I can't forget that. And now I have this, I have that x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus. Now the square root of 23 cannot simplify, so that's just going to stay as 23 inside the radical. And we've got to finish getting x by itself, so that just means subtract the 3 over. And now we have just x equals negative, th negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 23, just like that. So the way the original problem was written, we had this little gap here. And that's kind of a clue to you that you want to complete, you want to complete the square to solve this guy. And another thing that helps you out is that this is already a positive 1x squared, and the middle coefficient here is even. I mean, dividing an even number by 2 is it's what they're all about. So divide by 2 and square it. We add 9 to both sides. We factor the left side, combine like terms on the right, and we apply the square root property. That gives us x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 23. And now x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 23. Well, let's make this a little bit more I'll say challenging, but it's really not too bad. Let's do another example down here. So, let's look at this example. x squared minus 20x plus 109 equals 0. Now, one of the first things you always want to try to do with these problems is to see is it going to factor? Now, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, this guy will not factor, so don't even try to factor this guy. Instead, let's follow the steps that we have for completing the square. If you go back and look at the notes, see the first step is to get all, all of the variable terms to one side and the constant to the other. So that means I need to move the 109 to the other side. Now, that's, that's simple enough. So x squared minus 20x equals negative 109. Notice that I'm leaving a gap here because I know 
I'm going to have to fill in this gap when I complete the square. Well, let's see if I'm at the stage where I can complete the square. You can still see step two up here. It says divide all terms by the coefficient of x squared. Uh, the coefficient of x squared is 1, so dividing by 1 is not going to change anything. So the third step is to complete the square. When I complete the square, that's when I do the divide by 2 and square it. So I'm going to take negative 20, divide by 2, and square it. That gives me negative 10 squared, which equals a positive 100. It's always going to be positive. If it's positive or negative inside here, when you square it, it's going to be positive. So that means that I need to add 100 not only to the left side, but also to the right side of the equation as well. Remember, what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. Now, the reason that I added 100 was so that the left side of this guy would factor as a binomial square. I could have put a lot of numbers there that would have caused the left side to factor, but only one number would cause this to factor as a binomial square. And that was the 100. So this factors as x minus 10, remember I'm getting the negative 10 from right there, equals, and on the other side of the equation I have negative 9. Well, this now says to, I've completed the square, I factored as a binomial square. Now I need to apply the square root property and solve this. So take the square root of both sides, keeping in mind that we must have the plus or minus. As soon as you apply the square root property, you have the plus or minus. On the left side, I'm left with just x minus 10. And on the right side, I have plus or minus. 9 is going to give me 3, so the square root of 9 is 3. But this negative right here is going to come out as the imaginary part, or as the imaginary unit, I should say. So you've got plus or minus 3i. Finish solving this guy for x by adding 10 to both sides. Uh, and remember, when we use the square root property and we're moving things over from one side to the other, you want to make sure that you put it in front of the plus or minus. So x is equal to positive 10 plus or minus 3i. Now this answer is good enough. Uh, we can go ahead and box this. There's nothing more to do, nothing more to simplify. The other way that you could write this answer, considering that we do have complex solutions, is to separate this and say that x equals 10 plus 3i or x equals 10 minus 3i. So you can see your two different solutions, two different complex solutions here. So to review, you got your variables on one side and your constant on the other. You completed the square by dividing by 2 and squaring it. Apply the square root property and then you finish solving this guy.